Yo, what's up? What is up? Hope everyone's doing well. I'm just adjusting a few things in the stream. Adjusting the stream. Do we have good audio on the voice? Do we have good audio here? Brad. <laughs> And good guitar tone. We're looking for tone. And hopefully that, that translates to something that sounds tasty. Let's see if that sounds good. Yeah, good audio. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, Rita, go Vols. I got to close out Slack. I hear that thing bubbling at me in the background. Let's quit that. Yeah. Line clean. Uh, uh, good friend of ours, uh, Jay, has been uh, kicking off and 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 transcribing the. Uh, the Lonely in the Night solo. He's been working on it. And uh, Jay's a Woodshed member. For those that don't know what that means, that's the old Patreon. I kind of use that term for everything. You know, if you're hanging out with me, you're hanging out in the Woodshed, right? Looking for uh, Gatorade to sponsor us in the future. Gatorade Zero. It's a delight. Keep you hydrated. It's got what plants need. It's got electrolytes. Brondo. Brondo, the thirst mutilator. I love it. I love it. All right, cool. Let me get uh, let me get this window up here open. I want to see this. There we go. Looks like the audio is coming good. I like that. I like to see you guys say that it's good. We've got uh, thanks to the fine folks at Vidami. Now, uh, this one's not been charged up. I've been using this other Vidami. Let me just show you. I've been using this guy right here. The classic. Standby. Uh, it doesn't offer as many features as the blue, but the one thing I do like is, man, it never runs out of gas. As long as you got this thing plugged into your computer, you got gas in the tank. And I like that. Vidami is the reason we get to hang out here every Tuesday in the woodshed and talk about guitar and tone. And I got the brand new A-Dub signature model. <sighs> Knock the dust off that. Uh, this is, uh, got some hamburger pickups in it. These are these are going to be coming out really soon. These are wood buckers. Really proud of these these humbuckers and the way they uh, they came out. They sound great. I really like them. They sound really great clean. Give you some of that. Um, one of the things I was working on this week, uh, Jonathan Cordy posted in his channel the some of the uh, harp harmonic things that EJ does on on the Tears Austin City Limits thing, and it's a really neat. Uh, it's it's like. You got to use your pinky. It's kind of hard. So like, if I get the, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong chord. Let's try it there. There we go. Isn't that nice? So let's get that one more time. This is something I learned from John Cordy. He posted it up. You guys should follow John. He's, he's always just posting cool videos about playing. 
I really like him. He's a really great guy. Um, so to do this lick, you can obviously watch this video. But uh, I, I'm using the, like this kind of thing, this kind of claw technique where I'm keeping the pick in my, you know, like that. And then playing an octave above the chord. The notes are A, D, F sharp, C sharp, E, A. So you look at this chord in a lot of different ways, but it's a bit like a uh, variation of a, you could look at it as a, as a D, first inversion with a major seven, add nine. So D major seven, add nine, first inversion. Kind of like that, right? In talks with Brando, the thirst mutilator. So you got that thing going on. And then the first two notes are regular. And then now you start the harp harmonic and watch this. It's like the harmonic first. This is like plucking and then with the with the finger. But now we're gonna skip two strings. So we're gonna go to the E string and the G string. Like that, right? And then we're gonna keep that going all the way up. Really pretty. So you have like this whole thing. You kind of keep the roll going if you wanted to. Ah, come on. That last one's hard to get. There it is. There we go. Really nice one. Or if you're Ed. Anyways, I was working on that. It's really hard. Like, that's a weird grip for my thumb. And when I hold that for too long, it's just like, ugh. It's like making the F chord for the first time. And you're just like, no. Anyways, if you want to learn that tasty treat, you know, whip out the old Vidami. That thing will allow you to clip out what we're talking about here. We leave these streams up. Um, if anybody wants to get in here and make some thumbnails for us, we're looking for anybody that would love to donate their time and make custom thumbnails for the Vidami stream. Uh, all of us are so daggum busy. It's it's hard to make Vidami pedals. It's hard to uh, you know make albums. And I'm sitting here working on the uh, on the album, and and I just imported some sick, super sick banjo parts. Um, so really excited about that. It's going to be awesome. Do we have a good balance on guitar and microphone? If we don't, let me know. Uh, anyways, that's the what this the pickups sound like when you split them, you know? Right? That's like a series parallel. Here's like the more Hendrixy thing that I like. Vidami is, uh, again, for those that aren't aware, you get the one with the wire in it or the, uh, I see a couple of questions over in the chat. Get the one with the plug in it, plug it in your computer, or the other one will Bluetooth to your rig. Uh, it'll allow you to speed up and slow down. I, I say speed up, but return to speed, right? That's the right turn. You can loop, which is the big deal that you want. You can loop the section of music that you want from YouTube or True Fire or whatever. And then you can dive into your loop. You can manipulate it. You can slow it down. You can pause it. Things like that. It's a really valuable tool uh, in, in in talking, you know, about your playing and how to improve things and really get nuance uh, nuance details out of something you're trying to learn. So yeah, that's the thing. Um, the walk through of the tones. Cyber says, what's the signal chain? The signal chain is this Andy Wood guitar into my small pedal board. As you can see behind me, I've got the big pedal board. Yeah, it's got all the controllers on it. It's really fun. Um, small pedal board. Really sounded nice. And then we've got both humbuckers right here. Both humbuckers. Really a nice sound. Right. Um. Right. 
And then now here you have the, the series parallel. Uh, right. Sounds really good. And then with a little bit of overdrive, this is coming from the Sir Sheba. First stuff is the gearbox. Oh, my string was getting in the way. Let's try that again. Really a nice, uh, nice tone, man. Really, really liking that. Again, that's uh, that's the gearbox. <laughs> kind of nice and syrupy, which is cool. That kind of cool tone. You can also you can get it bright and crispy if that's what you're after. But I love that like thick, that thick bridge humbucker thing. You know, sucker for the Steve Morse, Eric Johnson, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, Matt here saying, do, you, do, you, do I know about Scotty Anderson? Yes, Scotty Anderson rules. He kills at those things, those harmonic things. Oh, yeah. All right, so uh, we got PM Audio Production in the house saying, new acts, yes, new acts for sure. Um, and obviously, thanks to our moderators today for helping us out, Chuck and Vidami for stepping in here and helping us guide the chat hope everyone's doing well on this tuesday lovely afternoon tuesday that's the signal chain i'm going into a cerbella this pedal board is going into the cerbella i've got a strymon delay on creating that like faux verb thing got some of that right there for those that don't know tennessee is making a statement folks making a statement and i'm here for it i'm absolutely here for it yeah. Cheers, Albin. Hope you're doing well. Um, Thomas is in the house saying he likes John Corey. Yeah, John Corey's great, man. Really, really great stuff. Uh, Albin says, after your last show, I backed the gain off my uh, gearbox a little and played with the mids. Yeah, it's really, that's the thing, right? So, like, when you roll the mids up, you get this, like, more toothy kind of thing. It's nice. 
But it is nice with the, the mids down, man. <laughs> It's like that sweet spot that sounds so good. Sharp right there. There we go. Kind of a cool thing. Any ETA on the woodbuckers, man. That's kind of a uh, hopefully soon. We got a new. We got a new something else that's going to go along with the woodbuckers, which could be cool. Do you practice with a metronome for speed development? I struggle with string skipping techniques. The string skippage can be a problem for sure. Um, dial the game back just a touch. <laughs> So when you're skipping around the, the strings, those kind of shapes right there, kind of nice. Where you have one note per string. Uh, sorry. Like those kind of intervallic jumps are nicer than, say, right? If you have some intervallics in there that are going. You start to have to have. The point where you're inevitably going to have one note per string. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I got, I got lost. My brain, my brain fried out for a second. I was like, Ooh. you see how I'm outlining that triad, that E flat triad. I'm hearing it over C though. another one where I, when I outline a triad I like to put two notes one then some other amount of notes That'd be a really good one right there. Would I have like three? It's like a 
really nice flow. Uh, uh, sorry. I forgot what I played. Something like that. So when I'm thinking about string skipping, I'm trying to like play a little bit to kind of get into the string skipping idea. So like, uh, will be a good one. Um. Right there would be a good one, right? Right, you see what I'm doing there? It's like, it's kind of like I'm, I'm thinking about this. And as I enter and leave the strings, I'm not keeping it parallel. It's almost like I'm coming in and out of the strings, like a pendulum. kind of like that's all just kind of the same kind of idea spread out through a couple of different octaves right you see how that's working uh and be like uh, uh Those kind of two note, one note, two note shapes are really nice for working on this stuff, right? So if you'd have. Be like a really nice one. like those bends right there you know what I'm saying (laughs) 
So uh, a couple of questions here coming in. Uh, if you're more interested in deep diving into that kind of stuff, definitely go over to my Patreon and sign up there. We have 600 videos, all kinds of different stuff, picking. We have master classes. I really recommend getting in at the Combo Amp tier to where you can join our weekly live Zoom master class. Really great. Also, as you're try trying to watch this stuff, wait till we finish this episode, and then you can go back with the Vidami and watch with the Vidami and, and slow the sections down and loop them so you can use the tool, right, that we're talking about here uh, to kind of inspect what's going on with the right hand. The thing that I'm, ta that I'm really looking at more than, than anything uh, when I'm kind of evaluating my playing is how does it feel? Is it comfortable? Like that's, that's the thing right there that really drives my, my fluidity is how, how, how comfortable can I put something? How, how can I get something under the hands that feels extra natural worrying the least about what it might look like worrying the most about what it sounds like and then what it feels like. Of course, those are the things. Um, Deacon fuse is in the house. All cool tones. Thanks Deacon. Um, have I ever played the Brushy Mountain Prison? No, uh, they do have a concert series up there. I haven't done it. Um, David Dare says, yeah, it works well with a singing tone. Yeah, it really does. Um, Mamet, how are you, sir? I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name. Uh, so three overdrives, the Pantheon and the Gearbox. Yes, three overdrives um, for sure. And then I have a, uh, a fuzz on here. Uh, so here's the, uh, here's the fuzz. <laughs> It's like a uh, octopus. Look at their move. Now Jack Gardner's kind of got some interesting stuff as he travels through this economy. He kind of economy picks a lot of it. I just alternate pick it all. I mean, that's just like the only way that feels natural for me because of the mandolin background. Um, so yeah. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What Octafuzz is that? It sounds killer. Um, this is the GNI Octafuzz, and uh, it sounds really great on the neck pickup with the uh, around the twelfth fret. It sounds really, really great for that. Um, Marcus, ah, how are you, sir? Um, hope everyone is well. The day after Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that kind of thing. Uh, my man says he was listening to Junk Town today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, man.
like this voicing. We get that sus sound. It's really nice. Here it is in E. in the house and he says how important do you feel it is to practice licks starting on the opposite stroke it's hard to imagine some licks ever benefiting from that like a g run you never start that on an up stroke, for example i don't really try to think about that i try to think about the volume uh the dynamic of the notes that i'm playing that way i mean you could tell that i'm always looking for a kind of a dynamic kind of sound <laughs> I don't like it where it's hyper compressed to the point where it's like I can't control those dynamics. trying to play a little bit to actually analyze what I, what's going through my mind. And it's really about the dynamic 
not the direction of the pick that I start on. I actually learned a lot of those Eric Johnson licks, and I don't start with an upstroke. I don't economy pick, but I feel like I can get them sounding moderately close, right? Um, I, I, I named I named today talking about consistency. That's what what today's topic was really about. Um, this all kind of ties together, right? Consistency in your tone, consistency in live playing, consistency with your your practice and your picking techniques. The thing that really matters the most is the quality of the note that you're playing. Is there something interesting about what you're delivering to the instrument? Not the not the pedals, not the not the amplifier. And the reason I say it like that, I'm not being dismissive of great gear, but I, all of the things that I'm talking about should translate through a, a Black Star micro practice amp or a, a Roland micro cube or something like that. The dynamics, the touch, the consistency of attention to detail in each tiny little note is what matters more than anything. Um, there's plenty of great players out there that have a ton of facility and all of that kind of only lends itself to one tone which is like hyper compressed and hyper gained up and then when it's without that there's a lot of flaws in the quality of the notes um, consistency to me means like how high is my lukewarm if i have a great night right and i'm playing better than i've ever played in my life and then i have the worst gig on the planet i've played worse than i've ever played in my life like where is my consistency where is my vanilla in the middle and trying to dive into that way of thinking Hopefully that will lead you to thinking about your playing in less obvious manners that actually have the most influence, like your foundations, like how good is the quality of note that you're playing? How, how, how solid is your delivery of attitude? Your, your, you know, if you take four or five different takes at a solo, uh, how, how consistent are you consistent? Are you from solo to solo or are you just punching in each note at a time to give it, you know, is it going to end up sounding a little robotic or whatever? I don't know. These are all just like ways of thinking. Um, obviously, various tools like Guitar Pro, right? Um, transcription tools, Vidami. Like these things can help you practice and have a consistency in your practice. But if you're only trying to memorize where the fingers go as a button press, I don't think you're going to have a high consistency because you're just trying to press the string into a fret as and deliver it as like, well, that's the note. To me, there's so much more to it. There's so much more character that you want to put on notes. There's so much more uh, sonic texture that you can delve into. Like when I see guys never even touch their pickup selector, I'm like, wow, man, like really? She's going to shred forever on that neck pickup? The super gained up tone? <laughs> right? right? Um, or not to say that there's anything wrong with... Uh, not having a pickup selector, but like, God, even Eddie Van Halen after, you know, five or six albums, he was like, you know what? I think I'm going to use a neck pickup. It's like, you got to have some things to mix it up. And I think some of Eddie Van Halen's neck pickup tone is some of my favorite tone. I really, really love it. It sounds really good. Um, here, here we go with some questions. Let me just jump right in here and, and get some questions going. Um, hazards. How do you, Hazard was asking about the directional thing. I, I just don't, I don't let that enter my mind because there's so many great players that, that have different directional approaches than I do. Like Jack Gardner is one of my favorite players. Plenty. These guys play great. They, 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 they economy pick a lot. Like I don't economy pick hardly at all. Rarely, rarely do I economy pick. <clears throat> How about the Steve Morse Lenny Bro pitch harmonic lap steel thing? I was just talking about that for just a second. Um, and it's uh, here's a great way to start it. it. Instead of trying to think about these really elaborate chord voicings that some of these guys do, start with just the open strings, right? <laughs> Pinch the first open string with the harmonic. Essentially what you're doing with your right hand is you're doing this. It has a different tone because the pick is behind the harmonic instead of in front of it. Or like, that's not right because it's the same way. Um, 
I don't know why it has a different tone. It just does. There's like a different kind of sound, right? Just the nature of it. I guess you're so close to maybe it's it's the fact that the pick is so close to the finger versus being. Yeah, that's what it is. See how it changes. So it makes it smaller sounding. So we're just going to use the open string harmonics right here. 12th fret. We're going to use our pinky. So we're going to have this motion where we're like pinch, pinky, pinch, pinky, pinch, pinky. Right? This is like children's nursery rhyme that never was written. So I'm... And I've only started doing this. I've only been working on this for a day or two it, with this this technique. Um, I've, I've always used these kind of things. I've always enjoyed that thing where it's just kind of playing lead lines around it. But what's new to me is like kind of using this pinky to be a, a pivot. That thing. And if you notice, as I go up, I'm going to hit it, pinky, four strings above it. So that's E to G. Now I'm going to go A to B, D to E, and then end on G. Now when I go backwards, it's the opposite. Oh, crap. Right. Go slow. Going down is harder for me for some reason. Now I can start adding in notes. really not that interesting because that's B to B, right? Like that would not make it very interesting. You wouldn't want to have, right? Maybe that one's a little more interesting. If you put a D down here. Oh, sorry. That kind of thing would be work, work nice. So that sounds kind of plain up there. Maybe it'd be cool like that. You see what I'm doing? That's actually really pretty, right? So on that last one where I have G, I'm playing the five of G. Right. And I get that natural harmonic. That one. Oh. I'm sorry. So that's the kind of thing that I'm experimenting with. I'm not really, I don't really have it like super dialed in yet. You know, I'm not Lenny bro. Shocker. Um, but I can play mandolin and I don't know if Lenny bro can play mandolin, right? We're all, we're all dumb, but not about the same things. Right. Um, since we're on the subject, if you're not writing or rehearsing with your band, how much do you play every day? Let's say on a normal day with no shows, plans to jam or anything like that. I would still log in a couple of hours. Um, on the weekends, you know, I'm doing kind of stuff around. I try to take a break and, unplug a little bit but i still end up picking up the guitar and noodling on something i've been working a lot on my records so that's taking a lot of time and a lot of interesting uh amounts and perspectives of the guitar and trying to 
deliver something fresh, uh, different. Those are the kind of words I'm looking for. You know, I'm trying not to do um, the modern prog metal thing. A lot of players are just like, that's everybody's jumping into that world. Um, I don't know what my kind of music is. I don't know what it is that I make, but I know I know it when I make it. <laughs> right. I don't know what kind of music, what you would call it to me, but it's definitely my music. It sounds like me. And I'm trying to double down on that with this new record. Um, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, that's, that's, that's really when, when you're asking about how much do you play, I play all the time. I just, I just like to play the guitar. It's a lot like playing video games or like taking my car out and like maybe getting on the water or like, you know, boating or like, it's just something that I like to do. So even when I'm not intending to do it as a job, I still like to do it. So I just pick it up and play. Um, that's, that's really the big thing for me. Uh, it's fun watching Jack Gardner go through the Gambali stuff. Funny. You got, you have Frank and Bali watch you play. I, I freeze in half. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jack, Jack definitely has his hand on the economy picking thing, right? I would say Frank Gambali is to Jack like what Eric Johnson and Steve Morse are to me. Like that's that's kind of that's kind of how that works. Um, Preet Parna is in the house. How are you, sir? I hope you're well. Thank you for the kind words. Love your new the, the Les Paul. The new Les Paul is amazing. Uh, it's sitting, yeah, right there. So it's not too far away. Andy has that Rick Graham type of technique that makes every single lick look effortless and, and easy. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. How much pick do you let stick out? I'm assuming you're talking about in the harmonic thing. About that much. And then when I play, um, let's see if I can put it, yeah, against the white there. About right there. Yeah. Yeah, about right there is pretty good. Yeah. Silliness. Okay. Uh, Andy, please help. When I practice and I try to learn, I can do the easy stuff. I can learn and perform a solo like Hotel California very fast. But when I do a difficult song in close to Dover, it's challenging. Um, I can't concentrate. Uh, man, don't feel bad, first of all. Because Cliff to Dover is a pinnacle of guitar playing, right? Like, that's still one of the greatest guitar instrumentals that's ever been written. Ever. It's incredible. Um, I think it sounds amazing. Uh... I think we're thinking about phrasing and timing and is the phrase delivered correctly. This is something that ties into what we do here with like the Vidami product. It's better to learn 20 seconds of a song and have it perfect than it is to learn four minutes of a song and not be able to play really any of it good. So taking things in doses and working those doses up, that's, that's far more valuable not trying to digest the whole thing all at once. That's really important because you can get frustrated very, very easily. I, I, I can't concentrate. I want to concentrate and complete those songs start to finish and I can't complete them. I mean, that's the thing, right? So like there's no, there's no measuring stick that says if you can play it, you know, you get this award and this trophy that's like, hey, you can play too many notes. Now you're official guitar player. That, that, that doesn't exist, man. I think you got to really play the music that that allows you to concentrate, dive into the things that you want to dive into and deep dive into. That's the most important. Don't don't think about these songs as like watermarks of like you can pl you can be really good if you can play this thing and if you can't play it you're not any good. Like that's not the way to think about that stuff, right? I'm assuming that that's kind of what you're talking about. I don't want to assume, but you know, uh 
I want to, he says, I want to concentrate, complete those songs, start to start them. And I can't complete. Yeah. Just take them in small doses, you know? All right. Marvin is saying, Andy, what's your view on finger independency for your left hand? A bit like a drummer has with his feet and hands. Uh, index ring pinky is tough by default. How would you practice that? I, Marvin, I'm going to give you the same answer. I give everyone when it comes to technical stuff. I never practiced things as technical stuff. I practiced fiddle tunes and music and the kind of music that I enjoyed. And because I was working on, you know, say Blackberry Blossom, right? Let me tune up real quick. Tune them up. The weather's kind of knocking them sharp. A little bit better. A little better. Yeah. So if I was going to work on Blackberry Blossom. Those types of things, like those types of fiddle tunes, helped me work on finger independence. <laughs> Working on music is really always the answer. I, I think that went out to Marvin. Marvin, I appreciate you hanging out with us today. Um, but working on music itself is the most important uh, thing that you can do. When you sub subdivide things down into exercises, uh, I'm. it works for a lot of people, right? But it, it, it was not what I did. I worked on tunes in music. I tried to learn by repertoire, right? A fish bulb is in the house. You just have to be stick with it and be honest with yourself and believe in yourself. Those are three big ones. Fish bulb just nailed something. You have to stick with it, right? You have to stay the course. You have to be honest with yourself. And that's a tough one because we want to like lie to ourselves and say we've got something when we don't. And we also want to uh, believe in ourselves. You got to believe you can do it. You really have, especially with right hand, left hand technique, you have to hear the music in your head and you have to believe that you can achieve it. Self-confidence is so much of it. Uh, it. Being at the point where you're like, I can do this. I've just got to figure out how. Staying in that mindset is what allows you to grow and achieve like, I really believe that. So, it's like, being a positive influence upon your own self, relaxing, find, being comfortable, this is all of these types of things. Understanding that you're not going to get it in a day, like, understanding that you may not learn how to play like Eric Johnson in a year, that's okay. <laughs> No, I still can't play like Eric Johnson, but I get a lot of compliments on it. A lot of people say, hey, man, you do a pretty dadgum good Eric Johnson. I don't sound like him, but I know things that I think sound like him to me, and I figured out a way to kind of assimilate some of those things, right? Uh, but it's taken a lifetime, and I work on, I, I work on it. And I, I work is the wrong word. I constantly play and try to improve my playing. Shredder a la mode. Shredder with ice cream is saying, uh, Eddie has that fiery sound. I love the bite and the fire. I do. I do. I love the unlawful carnal knowledge tones. I do too. Rusty Black says, I'm Italian. I don't understand the English language when they talk. I can read and understand, but I can understand when the people speaks. You get active subtitles in English. Okay. I understand you want some subtitles. Okay. That would be good. Noted for our internationals. Some subtitles would be nice. Um, Jay Smorey. 
Vadami, can you pedal map to Guitar Pro shortcuts? That's an interesting question. Chuck, do we know the answer to that? Can we pedal map to Guitar Pro shortcuts? Dustin Chang's in the house. I had someone tell me once you can play it 70% consistently. If you want to get better, those hard things have to be your new 70%. That's right. That's what consistency is. How do you work on your hybrid picking consistency? I find myself overpicking the hybrid pluck parts. Troy, this is a great, great question. And I'm going to say it again. How do you work on your hybrid picking consistency? I find myself overpicking the hybrid plucked parts. Uh, Troy, the, the trick is the, the with hybrid picking, you're not trying to pull the string away. You're simply trying to get that pop. And it's a, it's a motion that you get used to as you just try. Maybe when you're sitting around and normally you would strum some stuff. Try just going like pick fingers. so tongue-tied just then. Some of those bluegrass runs are kind of nice for working through. You see what's happening there? For me, it's like just incorporating the, the fingers into basic playing. Uh, makes it look easy yes he does that's a simple sentence we can just say that the end tommy Emanuel makes it look easy <laughs> oh what a great sentence and so true and so true do you use much chorus in your sound trying to decide if i need a chorus i'm on board for clean tones that's from jim jim when i do i use a pretty exaggerated chorus <laughs> This is the exaggerated chorus that I like. Sounds nice. And I use that for like, uh, I use that kind of thing right there for um, like Rascal Flat stuff, you know. Yeah, I use it for like the, um, I don't have a pit, uh, capo. That would actually, I would play that with a capo. Uh, maybe use a little bit 
for like the I like it. I like chorus. Really nice on the bridge pickup stuff, you know. Yeah. So a lot of delay goes a long way with that kind of sound too. Really nice, right? I'll get better at it. I will get better at it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's kind of how I look at the chorus thing. Just something to church up the tone a little bit. I really like this um, Strymon uh, Mobius. Kind of got a lot of a lot of cool sounds in it. I like it a lot. Um, Andy, can you give any tips for the mechanics of vibrato after bending up a whole step for those with small hands? Yeah, you, you kind of want to keep the string cradled. You can see the end of my fingertips, maybe. Like, keep the string cradled and use your whole wrist, your whole arm. You're not bending with your fingers, right? You're bending with your whole arm. Uh, tip there. The Cliff's uh, intro alone still owns. Yeah, 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 it for sure does. It for sure does. Uh, 10,000 hours to get good. Man, I think it's 50,000 hours. Let's just in increase it, right? Um David's asking if I do the gypsy jazz thing. And I, I I dabble, but not a ton, you know. I kind of kind of pseudo pseudo dabble. You know, not really proper gypsy jazz. Not a gypsy jazz player, but I do love it, and I try to steal a lick every now and then. Boomster Black says, it's a competition, but there ain't no winner. You mostly compete with yourself. I like that. It's a competition with yourself. You just want to be a better player than you were the day before, right? And better is a weird word. Better doesn't mean, uh, better doesn't mean more chops. A lot of guys I know have a lot of chops, and they're not my favorite players. However, Billy Gibbons does not have a ton of chops, and he's one of my favorite players. Better is art. So chops are good, but they don't define your sound. I think your sound is more important than any amount of chops. I have, if you scroll through my Instagram feed, I have played the glass prison arpeggios and too many notes and I've been fortunate enough or unfortunate enough to share the stage with Guthrie Govan and get murdered by him several times. But we had some moments where we had stuff harmonized or whatever, and it was cool. Um, however, uh, chops definitely, they're not, I, you forget them. You, you know, I learned, you know, there's a video of me playing uh, uh, bebop stuff. There's videos of me playing all this, you know, whatever. And I forget, I forget it. I forget it if I don't play it. You know, so my my goal in life as a musician is to create Andy Wood music, is to create Kennedy Wood Band music. Um, if you want to hear that stuff, you go to andywoodmusic.com. But my goal is to create my own sound and do my own thing, and and hopefully that connects with people in a in an interesting way, and and 
you know, those songs speak to somebody, right? Like those are the most important things to me is uh, that live thing. Eddie Salazar says, Andy, any tips on getting an endorsement? Yes, here's the biggest tip that I can ever give. Use what you want to use. Use the stuff that you want to use. And if your playing gets to the appropriate level, they will reach out to you. If your art connects with enough people, they will come to you. I will say it like they say in the movie uh, Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Endorsements are an interesting thing. They don't they don't validate your playing. There's tons of guys I know that have, you know, their endorsements on the internet. I I, I have my endorsements on the internet, you know, but those endorsements, I just I, I this guitar was a dream of, of a design that did not exist. I didn't come up with this thing to sell product. And as I was talking to the folks at Sir, they didn't want to build it because they didn't think it, anybody would care. Like the 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 twenty four fret mo- modern T design, like a like a new take on an old thing. It's something that nobody out there really wanted to do. Uh, my A and R at the time was a guy named Travis, and he helped me get John uh, on board and to to build one. So they built the black one, and uh, and uh, that when they when they did the black one, they it was just a one off, just never meant to be anything other than the singular. Uh, one guitar and then a couple of years later they announced that they were going to do a line of the modern tees and then the signature models came about and here here we are but as far as like seeking an endorsement i never set out to like hey man somebody give me free stuff and even to this day there's a lot of companies that hit me up that want to send me things and i just tell them no because i'm not interested in uh being flooding my home with more gear it's already got too much gear and this is the stuff that i actually use i can't imagine saying yes to everything that anybody want to send me endorsements should should start and end they should start and end with the things that you want to play the things that help you create your art and help you create your music i think chasing an endorsement for some kind of validation to some somehow garner more clicks or say, Hey, look, Bogner amplifiers is I'm on their page. See, I am a good guitar player. Like that's something that you got to internalize to yourself and be like, you got, you got to make the, the thing that makes you feel good and, and, and do it with that. Let me just show you something real quick. These are two of the most uh, kind of important guitars of my life. This this first one uh, I got when I was a kid, and I really loved Brent Mason and, and Jimmy Olander. So it's got a checkerboard, not because of uh, Cheap Trick, but because of Jimmy Olander. It's got the Brent Mason setup in it. And this is the only guitar I had. So I had to make it do. I had to make it do, whether it be rock or club gigs or whatever. And uh, it's got some chips in it, and like chunks of it are missing. And then fast forward, this was the first prototype and, and my main guitar for the past few years, maybe for the past six years. Uh, yeah, six years or so since we released it. And this was one that was fabricated by hand and then all of the other ones were, were meant to match it. But like these two guitars were the most important in my life and they were a means to an end. The Telecaster naturally has this huge bolted heel joint thing that's really uncomfortable when you get up high. And so this guitar influenced the design of this guitar with this asymmetrical bolt design. And it wasn't because I thought, hey, I'm going to be you know, self-indulgent enough or delusions of grandeur to think that I'm going to sell a billion of these guitars. It was a means to an end to try to make better music and be a better player. So I know that's a really long answer, but it's the truth. Like you don't, you don't really seek out endorsements to validate yourself. Uh, any of those feelings should come from trying to make better music and be a better player. And then if you do that and you chase that long enough, everything will eventually fall into place. A lot of my friends that are big name players, they start, they started out playing what they wanted to play. And then those companies gave them the gear, right? Like I remember Pliny had a Strandberg before he was famous. And now there's like a Pliny model Strandberg, right? It's, it's exactly that thing. You know, um, Andy Timmons was playing friggin' Ibanez's forever before there was like the Andy Timmons Ibanez, you know what I'm saying? So American musical supplies saying they endorse my play. Thank you. Thank you. AMS. Right. (laughs) 
but I thought it would be kind of cool to show you like what that and the, and the reason the prototype was black was kind of an homage to the the, the original guitar that I played uh, just being just a, a working man's telecaster you know let the uh, sounds cheesy sounds like a bumper sticker or a t-shirt but let the proof be in the picking you know you don't have to uh, you don't have to have somebody's name on you to validate you a great example of that is john mayer fender kept hosing him down and hosing him down and finally he was just like i'm not gonna work with you anymore i will work with prs <laughs> and john can do what he wants right it's john freaking mayer so uh yeah so that that's that's the thoughts on the endorsement things uh and and, and that goes back to in, in in some senses it goes back to consistency just consistently focus on yourself consistently double down on the things that you believe in focus on the music that you want to make you know be honest with yourself and uh and everything will kind of fall in place if if you just come at things with the right perspective life i've, I've learned that life is just a matter of perspective obi-wan says it in star wars he goes well what i told you was true from a certain point of view Luke gets mad that he says of certain point of view, but that's really it. Right. And so with consistency and practice and it doesn't matter, you know, it's like you can buy all of the Vidamis in the world. You can buy all of the Vidamis in the world. And if you never use it and you don't use it consistently, I mean, you can tell mine's got dirt on it and stuff. That's how, that's how much I use mine. It's like, it lays here. It lays in the floor. Like that's how much I use it. And uh, it stays where it's supposed to be to where I can work. My, my, my work area right now is a mess because I'm working on an album. But you can buy all the Vidamis in the world. You can buy every guitar in the world. You can be endorsed by every company on in, in the world. But if you don't make stuff, then it doesn't matter. If you don't practice, then it doesn't matter. If you don't play the guitar. And, and that's another thing. We, we, we constantly look at the word practice as like it's, it's eventually going to like unfold one day and magically we'll be a musician. Like, no, nah, man, it's playing the guitar. Go play the guitar, play the guitar for hours. And then, you know, you'll realize that that is practice, you know, but you've got to, you got to put, you got to put things into it and you got to consistently put things into it. So that's kind of my thoughts here. Again, uh, I appreciate you guys all for hanging out this week. Uh, and, and it's been a great hang today. I look forward to it in the future. We are, you know, looking for folks to uh, make some thumbnails for us. If anybody's got that skill set and just wants to donate some extra time to what we do, you know, we've, we would love to have, we'd love to have some custom thumbnails. And uh, if anybody's just into that, reach out, let us know, let Chuck know, uh, go to vidami.com, email them for topics. Uh, they, they're great at letting me know what you guys want to see. Um, so yeah, for sure. Definitely, uh, reach out. Also, we have a code for Vidami. If you use the woodshed live 10 code, uh, you get it right there. It's popping up in the chat right now. Uh, if you, if you use the Vidami codes, uh, you get a discount, get a 10% discount, but again, you can buy every Vidami that they make. And if you don't use it, it doesn't, it's, you're not going to get any better. You're not going to learn anything. You're not going to become a more experienced player. Uh, I know I sounded a little preachy, and I, 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 it's not meant to, it's just meant to inspire, right? If you do your job, the companies will show up, right? It's, it's, it's inevitable, right? The, the Michael Jordan shoes weren't, weren't great because Nike all of a sudden started making shoes. They were making shoes long before Michael Jordan showed up. When he showed up, he changed the game. Why? Because of Michael Jordan, right? So that's, that's the kind of thing that you got to keep in the, in the back of your mind when you're looking for an endorsement. You got to remember that there's two things that happen in an endorsement. There is what you do um, in the aspect of like you play guitar, right? You want, you need free gear, you not free gear. You need gear to like do the thing. But you also got to remember the manufacturer is in the business of selling stuff. So you got to sell stuff, right? It works that way. Like if I'm not selling Vidamis, I'm not bringing any value to the partnership, right? If I'm not selling Sir guitars, I'm not bringing any value to the partnership. That's not some big secret. That's not some big industry secret. If we didn't sell a single gearbox, we would have a single, we'd have a problem because I'd be, 
not holding up my end of the deal, right? So you got to remember that that when you, the artist, are going to play the guitar that you want to play, you are endorsing the company. You are saying this is good. You see the Vidami thumbnail right here where my hands are? I'm endorsing Vidami. I'm putting my reputation on the line. If you guys bought this and it wasn't any good and it had bugs and the software didn't work and the buttons were cheap and it fell apart, you wouldn't like it. And then you would think that I was full of it because I've endorsed a company that makes a bad product. You see me wearing the hoodie, right? You see the guitars and the amps. If you bought my guitar and it was a dud, you'd be like, well, Andy's full of it. So you got to remember that you, as an artist, you endorse the manufacturer. You're saying, this is good. I'm risking my reputation to put that on the line, right? Like that, it's a, it's a big symbiotic thing, you know, and a manufacturer's risk is hitching their wagon to you because you could go full Kanye West, <laughs> And just lose your mind. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a two way street. You gotta, it works both ways. Right. Um, Preet says, play the PRS one day. I will actually, I've been using the PRS a ton for the rhythms on my album and it's really been great. I really, really love it. Uh, Fishbulb says these streams have been super helpful, man. I appreciate you so much. And I do appreciate that beer money. Um, I for sure will have a cold one and toast you, my friend. I appreciate that so much. Uh, Boomster, Boomster Black, the art of noodling. It really is that. I mean, you, you know, it, it, it is the art of noodling. It's sitting with your instrument and poking around and looking around. And if you consistently, let's end it with this. If you consistently play the same thing every day, you will not grow. You have to consistently search for new items. You've got to search for new pathways. And you have to consistently do that, Right. And Vidami here is saying, yeah, once you start using it, uh, you know, people love it. And 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 for sure, the biggest thing that you guys here hanging out with us is just share, share the love. You know, if you enjoyed the hang today, take the link, copy it, post it on your page, share the love. You know, let's get more people in here to hang out with us. That's really, you know, what community growth is about and how we do it. So if you're having a good time with us in, in the in the hangs, please uh, share the links and we'll go from there. And we're working on an Adidas endorsement for Andy. Yeah, I, I'm going to step in and take Kanye's place with the tra his his place with the track suits. That's what I'm going to do. And due to his uh, recent behavior, I too have cut ties with Kanye West. I no longer associate with uh, with Ye. He's not my guy. He's not my guy. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Hope you had a great time this week and we will see you in a week. We'll see you next Tuesday. Have fun.